My father and grandfather always used to say, you can't catch a fish if your line's not in the water. Hi there, welcome to The Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Before we get into the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like the video, drop a comment below. Thank you so much. Well, probably a lot of you heard the same thing when you were growing up and cutting your teeth in the fishing world. You're not gonna catch anything if that line is not in the water. Now, when we think about what that really means, it means that fishing is a game of percentages. The longer that your bait is in the water, your odds of catching go up. The longer that your bait is in the correct zone, the odds of catching go up. The longer that your bait is in the exact perfect area, the odds of your catching go up. Fishing is a game of percentages. Now in our Facebook group and YouTube channel, just last week I had asked a question. We have so many amazing members that have probably thousands of years of combined angling experience. And my question was, if you had one piece of advice to give somebody or to give a brand new bass angler, what would it be? And we had all kinds of excellent responses that really had a wide range of answers, but one that kept coming up consistently over and over was slow down. And that is some great advice. So today what I want to do is I want to talk about three ways that you can slow down. I should say three easy ways to make yourself slow down. And I guarantee you, I promise you, you're going to catch more fish. Now you may be asking yourself, well, why would I want to slow down? Well, let me tell you a quick little story. Here in my home area of Northern Illinois, there was a man by the name of Mr. Kindlespire that was probably the most well-known bass angler in the area. Maybe we had two or three guys that were that guy that always caught fish, and he was one of them. And he loved to fish as he got older, canals. In Northern Illinois, we have several long canal systems that would connect Lake Michigan to the Illinois River or other major river systems. We had the i &M Canal and the Hennepin Canal. And Mr. Kindlespire loved to fish these. And on more than one occasion, I would run across him on a canal or he'd ask us to go fishing. Him and uh, his grandson and I were good friends and he'd ask us to go fishing with him. And I got to watch him a whole bunch and it would almost look like from a distance that he's not doing anything. He'd throw that line out into the water and he loved to use a little slider head with a four inch uh, power worm chartreuse pumpkin, a pumpkin with a little chartreuse tail. He'd have that on all the time on a little slider head and he'd throw that out onto, into that murky dingy water and these canals were not clear water, okay? and he'd throw that out there and you'd watch him from a distance and it looked like he wasn't doing anything, imparting any action whatsoever. And I would be down the bank ways from him and I'm throwing out there, reeling in, throwing out there, reeling in. And before you know it, I'd hear some splashing and I'd look over and I would see him landing a really nice bass. And he'd look down and have a big grin on his face. Wouldn't really say a word besides, you know, boy, that's a nice one put it back into the canal and continue on his way. He was a fish catching machine and one of his biggest techniques was to fish slowly. I learned a lot from watching him. And then over the years, I've developed three ways that I like to make myself slow down and that's what we're gonna talk about here today. Method number one, use a low gear ratio. Fast gear ratios, your 7.2s, your 7.3s are extremely popular. I have a ton of them. I use them for very specific techniques. But if you find yourself consistently fishing too fast, pick up one of those reels that are a 5.2 or a 5.3. That will physically make you slow down. It is a great little tip or trick to help slow you down. On all my crankbait rods, I've got five twos and five threes because I do not want to fish those crankbaits too fast. Probably the most popular gear ratio is at six two or six three, which is a good all around ratio. 
but it's super easy when we're fishing to start to go too quickly, the crank too quickly. So if you go to a lower gear ratio reel, it will force you to slow down. So if you think that you fish too quickly, that's probably the first thing that I would do is pick yourself up a slow gear ratio, lower gear ratio, five, two, five, three. Excellent tip. It helped me a bunch. Tip number two for making yourself slow down is say something, say a phrase. It doesn't have to be out loud. You can say it up here quietly in your head. Let me give you an example. In multiple uh, videos that I've done with a swim jig, I say the same thing over, over and over again. And this is what Tom Monsoor, one of the most famous swim jig anglers in the country says. As he's fishing that swim jig, he says consistently, Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. It works, it makes you slow down. And that swim jig, as he's doing that, he's keeping it on a real nice slow pulse. It's maintaining its depth in the water column when he, where he wants it, but he's keeping it nice and slow where it looks so seductive, like an easy meal, and those bass just cannot leave it alone. Every time I fish a swim jig, always I am saying that one particular phrase and I won't lie there's been moments where I find myself going float like a butterfly sting like a bee and I'm like whoa 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 what is going on now if I'm fishing by myself I might whisper it to myself so I hear it and make myself fish slower but if I have a partner in a boat I don't want him to think that I'm all messed up in the head so I will fish it silently but I like to say a phrase what is something that you can say that will force yourself to physically slow down. That second tip, it works. The number of fish that I caught with a swim jig or a swim bait has gone through the roof just by that simple trick of saying a phrase to make myself slow down. My third tip is one that we talked about just a couple weeks ago, and that is drag. And I'm not talking about the drag on the side of your reel. I'm talking about dragging a lure out the back of your boat. Co-anglers in a pro-am type of a tournament, they do this all the time because fishing from the back of the boat can be difficult and you may not be able to get up into the areas that you want to if you're fishing close to the shoreline and the pro in the front is guiding the boat. So co-anglers over the years have developed this dragging technique where they'll throw out something like a Ned rig or a Texas rig and they'll just throw it out there to the back of the boat and they will just hold that pole and as the angler in the front is moving the boat along that bait is dragging along the bottom. It works, it works, it works. I have seen so many times when the person in the back of the boat outfishes the person in the front of the boat with this one simple technique. And if you think about what I said in the beginning of the video that fishing is a percentage game, that's why dragging works. That bait is down there in, in the zone probably 99% of the time. When the angler in the back of the boat reels it up and throws it back out, yeah, it's out of the water for a minute or two, but that angler can sit there in the back and keep that bait in the zone five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and just keep going. And the cool thing about technique number three or tip number three for helping yourself fish slowly is with a dragging technique, the fish almost sets itself on the hook. So that line is fairly taut as it's bouncing across there. You can feel the bite pretty easily. And then when they grab it, the slack line is gone. You don't have to move any slack line. So it does not take much of a hook set or a side sweep to penetrate that fish and get it coming to the boat. You're not fighting any slack line whatsoever. And that dragging technique forces you to fish slowly. I don't know about you, but I always struggle with this. I always tend to fish too fast. But if I notice, man, I haven't got a bite in a while. It's probably because I'm fishing too fast and I will revert back to one of those three techniques. I promise you this winter, next spring, next summer, next fall, for the rest of your fishing days, if you do one of these three things, you will put way more fish in the boat and you might just be that angler that everybody in your area knows catches fish 
all the time. Hey, don't forget to go out and encourage somebody today. You never know what a difference you're gonna make in their life for the bass fishing life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers.